So in the last video, we just talked through this kind of high level overview of the mixed logit model. Now we're gonna dive down into the details and define the choice probabilities and talk about those. So in the previous models, the logit, nested logit models, for example, we started by defining kind of an underlying distribution, making an assumption about the joint density of our unobserved utility, that those epsilon terms. And, and then we generated choice probabilities from there. In this case, we're actually gonna do the opposite because a mixed logit model is actually gonna be any discrete choice model with choice prob probabilities of a specific form. So instead of defining our model by our assumptions about the, uh, the unobserved utility and using that to get choice probabilities, we're actually just going to define this model based on those choice probabilities directly. And the definition of choice probabilities for the mixed logit model is this integral form here in the middle of the slide. So we're going to say that the, uh, the choice probability or the probability that decision maker N chooses alternative I is this integral where we're going to take the integral of this L object where this L object is a logit probability at a given set of coefficients. So you can think about this, this L here in the middle of this expression is like the logit, prob the logit choice probability that we learned weeks ago. But then we're gonna integrate this over our density of betas, over the density of the coefficients that exist out there in the population. And that density is going to depend on some underlying parameters, theta. So let me just, let me say this again, but maybe a little bit backwards. We're, as we talked about in the last video, the mixed logit model is going to assume that we have a distribution of coefficients in the population. And that distribution is gonna be given by this F. This is gonna be the density of our coefficients. And that density is gonna be defined by some parameters theta. So we wanna integrate over that density, taking the logit choice probability at every one of our beta coefficients. Over the next couple of slides, we'll talk about a few different ways to think about this that I think will be more intuitive than just staring at this integral. But the big point here is that these choice probabilities are integrals over logit choice probabilities that don't have a closed form expression. Because of this integral, because we're integrating over a density of coefficients, this choice probability does not have a closed form expression. Uh, you know, even if I told you everything about this, it's going to be very challenging, if not impossible, for you to actually calculate directly what this choice probability would be. But let's say just a few more words about how we can actually think about these choice probabilities and the intuition behind them. So once again, the choice probability is this integral of logit choice. Let me, let me say this again. The mixed logit choice probability is this integral of logit choice probabilities at, where each logit choice probability is calculated at beta. And then we're gonna integrate over the distribution or the density of betas that are in the population. So I think the most intuitive way to think about this is that the mixed logit choice probability is essentially a weighted average of logit choice probabilities. And the, the kind of intuition here is that we basically want to take the logit choice probability at a bunch of different values of beta, at every possible value of beta in the population, calculate what the logit choice probability is for that value of beta, and then just take a weighted average over all those logit choice probabilities weighting by the density of our betas, or essentially how likely it is that a beta is actually going to occur out there in the population. So for every beta, we want to calculate the logit choice probability. The betas that we think are, are more likely to occur in the population, we kind of want to upweight those. The betas that are less likely to occur in the population, we want to downweight those and then take a weighted average. 
So the mixed logit choice probability is really just a weighted average of logit choice probabilities. It's just kind of because our betas are tend to be continuous, it, it ends up taking this kind of complicated looking mathematical form. But the intuition under kind of underlying it is really just that we're trying to take a weighted average of a bunch of different logit choice probabilities, waiting for how likely it is that we'll, we'll, we'll observe a given set of beta coefficients in the population. A kind of more formal way to describe this choice probability is that the mixed logit choice probability is a mixed function of logit choice probabilities with a mixing distribution given by that, that f of beta. So if you're kind of coming from a more statistical mindset with a more formal statistical definition, that's how we can describe this thing. But I think for most folks, it's going to be easier to just think about this, this kind of first description that I gave here, where, where we're thinking about the mixed logit choice probability as a, as a weighted average of logit choice probabilities. But thinking about that more formal definition does at least give you maybe some understanding of where the term mixed logit comes from. We're thinking about this choice probability as a mixed function where we're, we're, we're basically averaging over logit choice probabilities with a mixing distribution. So that's where the mixed terminology comes from. I've kind of said the words parameter and coefficient as I've been describing these. And I want to say a few more about uh, a few more words about these, these different terms. So kind of previously in this course, I at least used the terms parameter and co coefficient kind of interchangeably. Um, we sometimes call things parameters, sometimes coefficients, but, but they were basically the same thing. But I'm going to try to be very careful, and I'm going to use the terms parameter and coefficient to mean two different things in the mixed logit model. Betas, and, and I'm going to use different, different mathematical, you know, different Greek letters to represent these things. Betas are going to be the coefficients that appear in the utility expression. So when we write down representative utility, that's going to have betas in it. However, we are not actually going to estimate coefficients. We're not going to estimate the betas in the mixed logit model. These coefficients just get integrated out of the choice probability. If we jump back to the last slide, we can see here we're actually integrating over betas. So they kind of they 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 uh, they get integrated out of the choice probability. You can think about this, they get integrated out of the choice probability in the same way that our epsilons got integrated out of choice probabilities previously. But then the other term parameters, I'm going to represent those with thetas, and parameters are going to define the density of random coefficients. And these are going to be the parameters that we actually estimate. So even though we're not estimating beta coefficients, we do need to know what is the distribution or density of those coefficients in the population. And it's going to be the thetas that define those distributions or densities. I think it's easiest to see this if we, if we look at some examples. So maybe, maybe we want to say that a beta is just a normal distribution. We think that the marginal utility of income out there in the, in the population is normally distributed with some mean and some variance. So then the beta coefficients that we don't estimate, those things are going to be normally distributed, but we want to estimate what is the actual distribution of those betas? We know that it's normal, but we need to know what is the mean and variance or standard, standard deviation of that particular normal distribution that we observe in the, in the population. And so then in that case, what we're going to estimate is a mu parameter to tell us what is the mean of our betas and a, a sigma parameter to tell us what is the uh, what is the variance of our betas? We're not going to actually estimate the betas, but we're going to estimate those parameters that define the distribution of betas. And by, by estimating those, those parameters that define the distribution, we're essentially defining what all of our betas in the population look like.
but we're not actually estimating any parameter that we're going to call beta. We can similarly think about beta as being log normal, and then once again, we'll estimate a mean and a variance. It could be uniform, and then we can estimate the, the end points of the, of the beta distribution. It could be triangular, and we could estimate the, you know, the ends and the middle point, whatever. We, could, we can think about tons of different distributions that we could plug in here. But whatever the distribution is, there's going to be some set of parameters that define that distribution. And it's going to be those parameters that we actually estimate in the mixed logit model. So now that we've talked about choice probabilities and, and some of kind of the, these random, how we might think about coefficients as being random, let's talk more about actually kind of rationalizing this model by talking more about these random coefficients. And we're going to do that in the next video.